What's up, YouTube? It's Yardy on that talks to react to another video. We got the war in the Bronx, OGs versus the YGs versus serve side, sales side. Like, comment, subscribe, follow the links in the description. And let's get into it, man. The Bronx is a wild place. It's the borough with the most crime and is well known for gang activity. Damn. The Bronx drill sound is on the rise Bronx, and is fueling Bridge. the deadly war between three gangs, the OGs, the YGs, and Sev side. Let's Which get straight into this crazy from? beef. Brooklyn was getting attention for its drill scene, but the Bronx is coming with a whole new sound that's starting to make waves. K Flock is one of the hottest rappers from the Bronx right now, racking up millions of plays on songs like Being Honest and PSA. Bronx drill may have the same bass lines and hard flow as Brooklyn and UK drill, but it has its own unique sound that's influenced by classic New York hip hop. Most of the beats have classic samples laced in with distorted 808s that gives the music a different vibe than drill from other areas. K Flock has been riding away with his new sound and has been building a buzz over the past few months. But his come up ain't just been all success. He also suffers from the pain and loss that comes with the street life, losing many friends to gun violence. K Flock hopped off the curb at a young age and was on the block at like 12 years old. He started rapping because of his homie Dougie B, who's also a rapper and has been featured on multiple tracks. K Flock's first official track was a remix of the 22G song, Blicky Gang Freestyle, which he titled FTO. Yeah. 22Gs then gave K Flock a shout out in a recent interview showing love to the Bronx drill movement. In August 2021, he remixed Siggy Black's song, Dishonest, and called it Being Honest. That track quickly racked up millions of views and earned him a feature from G Herbo. Oh, the G, There's also bro. rumors the that he recently signed a seven figure deal and he's in a good position to take over the Bronx rap scene. But behind why y'all sign a seven figure deal, my nigga? You know you gonna have to pay, make that shit back so many times, bro. You was better off, 100K deal, move out the hood and chill, make that 100K back. Then, but I don't got no money, so I can't say shit. All of K Flock's success is a deadly war that involves his own family members. He's from a blood set around East 187th Street in a hood known as Sev Side. Sev Side is made up of Mac Baller Brims and Sex Money Murder, and they cool with the Rolling 80s Crips. Sev side beats with other gangs in the area, including the OGs or original goons and the YGs or young gunners. At first, these two was the same gang and controlled a few different projects around Cortland Ave, not far from Sev side. YGs, but one shit. of the founders of the YGs crossed over another top member, so the dudes in his hood split off to form the OGs. Today, the YGs are one of the most hated gangs in the Bronx and they beef with almost everyone. One of the YGs main rappers named D Thang is K Flock's blood cousin. The two rappers have been dissing Dude, each other right. back and forth. D Thing shocked the whole hood by dropping a Chicago style drill track called Talking Facts, where he disrespects dead ops from damn near every gang the YG's beef with. But the beef ain't start with rap. It began with multiple yeah. murders, Man, followed by hard. threats and <laughs> music and on social media. In July 2021, a 19 year old rapper who went by the name Ty Swish was shot in the head in the lobby of his apartment building. He ran outside after getting shot, but had been hit in the eye and quickly collapsed. A family Boy. friend and her two kids found him unconscious outside the building. He was rushed to the hospital, but he was dead at the scene. Man, that shit get cracking in the buildings? Damn. Witnesses say the gunman fled in a dark colored four door sedan, but was never identified. Friends and neighbors said Ty Swish was a good kid who never got in trouble, but he was allegedly from sex money murder and they would quickly even the score for his death. A few days later, 13 year old Jerry and Elliot was chased down and killed outside the Angels Cafe in the Belmont neighborhood of the Bronx. Jerry and just graduated from junior high and was turning 14 later that month. But even though he was young, he already claimed to be from the Rolling 80s Crips. He had already got arrested eight times for robbery and assault and spent time in juvie. Well, a friend of Jerry's said the Crips put him on yeah. when he was 10 years old and that she tried to warn him about the lifestyle, but he ain't listened. The murder was captured on surveillance footage and showed Jerry walking down the street with a friend. A black sedan is seen driving up alongside him, then coming to a stop. A mass shooter then hops out and shoots at both of them. His friend ran away, but Jerry falls and then crawls into a local cafe. He got shot in the legs and the chest and was rushed to the hospital, but later pronounced dead. Police think Jerry's death was payback friend, for killing Ty Switch. Real, they don't know if he was a killer, but they believe he was there at the time of the murder. Just a few hours Bye. after Jerry got chipped, the ops got their revenge and a 16 year old got killed and police think it was a payback hit. On Sunday, July 11th, a 16 year old rapper named Rajiz was shot while getting into an Uber. Rajiz was from the 800 YGs and the shooting is believed to be retaliation for the murder of Jerry and Elliot. Rajiz supposedly made fun of Jerry and death on social media right after it happened and the get back was immediate. He was on his way to the studio. And New York is so big, I'm like, how do you niggas find each other so fast? Studio like, and two men on scooters pulled up and started dumping shots. 
And like, and like every street is a different world. Like you can go five streets down, you'll never find it. So it was Uber. <laughs> the whole thing was captured on the driver's dash cam and quickly went viral on social media. The rapper got shot and the get back was immediate. He was on his way to the studio when two men on scooters pulled up and started dumping shots into his Uber. The whole thing was captured on the driver's dash cam and quickly went viral on social media. The rapper got shot once before, Damn. but survived. His mom said he was trying to turn his life around and was focusing on his music career, but he didn't get that chance and instead became another casualty in this deadly war. But the case is still active and they both minors, so there ain't too much public info available. With so many deaths on all sides, the beef between the YGs, OGs, and Seth's side was really heating up. But one thing I heard though, I ain't heard, it ain't no casualties, like they came to get who they came to get. And you know, other people get hit. That's On August 16th, K Flock dropped the track, Is He Ready?, where he disses multiple rival rappers, including his own cousin, D Thang. In the first verse, he says, Boy, ask my ops, it could get ugly. I could do shh, like Ice did Sunny. This is referring to the classic film, Paid in Full. In the movie, Mitch, one of the main characters played by Makai Pfeiffer, has a younger brother who gets kidnapped for ransom. Mitch tries to get the money, but he gets killed by Rico, played by Cameron, who steals the drugs to pay Sonny's ransom. Sonny gets killed as a result, and come to find out, he was set up by his own uncle, Ice, who was mad at Mitch for kicking him out of the house. So in this bar, K Flock sends a shot directly to his own cousin, D Thang, and lets him know he's not above setting him up. The song was big in New York, and even got played on Hot 97. So you can probably guess how the ops felt about this. D Thang quickly hopped on social media and gave his thoughts on the bar, saying, Can't wait to see Auntie now. A few weeks later, another Damn, Rolling 80s member who was affiliated with K Flock got murdered broad day. The victim was 16 year old rapper Nas Rolla. He was killed after two men hopped out of a Honda Accord and popped him in the head and chest in Seth Side's hood. Police said that Nas Rolla had a long criminal history and got arrested 18 times already, including 10 felonies. Boy, these niggas be getting busy, but after five times, send them niggas a Rikers, bro. You can't do nothing with them niggas. Dating back to May 2017, he was recently arrested for gun possession and was fighting three other open gun cases. After his death, D Thing would hop on Instagram and sneak this Nas Rolla, who was his cousin K Flock's right hand man, suggesting he might have got set up. Right around the same time Nas Rolla was killed, D Thing dropped Talk Facts, which is pretty much the Bronx version of Who I Smoke, where he disses all his ops, both alive and dead. On the track, he samples the song, Somebody That I Used To Know by Got Ye, and throws a sub at a different op in almost every bar. Some disses include, Dougie got shot, but he's still in recovery, sending shots at K-Flock's homie, Dougie B. He also says, come on CJ, you see me when I ain't see you, but you ain't even make a move, so how the f when you see me, you gon' shoot. In this bar, he takes shots at another rival rapper from Cortland who dissed D Thing on the track Kidnap Who, after D Thing said he was gonna kidnap Booba Savage, who was also featured on the track. Later, he raps, Jiggy Man, uh, aka really Shot Egg, dumbass got hit. That's word on my mother, they never do shit. Here, he's talking about a rapper named Shot Egg, who's from the OGs and known to go by the name Jiggy Man. So, it looks like Bronx Drill is following the same pattern as Chicago and the UK. Rappers diss each other in songs and follow it up with real violence. What's really crazy is that a lot of them are under 18 and still in high school. So really, they don't fully understand the consequences Kids, that come with the lifestyle they live in. Hopefully, Especially they're paying attention to how hot it's getting in O Block and they cool it down before it's too late. But with so many lives lost on both sides, it's hard to see an end in sight. Man, that's the end of the video. Like, comment, subscribe, follow the links in the description. Shout out to all the rappers in this video. Y'all need to chill out, my nigga. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth the time. It ain't worth the life. All praise to the most high. I'm Yardy and I'm out. Amen.